can turn the world on with a smile You can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile What is it, girl, and you should know it Each words and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to fake it You can never it down, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after all Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Today is Thursday, May 2nd, and as of today, Mark has 432 days left to go in his prison sentence. That's until his early release date of 85% of five years, and that's July 9th, 2014. And it's almost halfway through 2013 already, so we're going to be in summer next year pretty quick, and Mark will be home, and I just can't wait. But otherwise, he has his U.S. transfer application into the U.S. government. I forgot to tell you guys last week that um, he got it back to him because it was dated wrong, so he had to re-sign it and send it off again, and so hopefully now it's all good to go. But we'll know about the U.S. decision in about a month and a half or so, and hopefully it'll be a big yes, and then it goes to the Canadian government. So Mark has his recent blog about his prison band, and that got written about in the Metro today. I don't think it's in the print version, I looked for it, but at least online, as you can see here in the screen capture, uh, there's a picture of Mark and his prison band Yazoo for his blog about having that band. Uh, but recently, in fact, two members have since changed up. They decided they want to change things, so the band's actually changed recently. And so Mark is feeling and looking pretty good, and I've got some recent pictures actually here. I haven't scanned them yet, so Greg's going to do some close-ups. But there's Mark, two photos of him just in his prison issue t-shirt and shorts, and uh, you know, looking pretty healthy, I guess. He's you know in prison as far as that goes. Um, he's doing pretty well. But this was our last visit here on April 13th and April 14th. And that was the last time I actually saw him. And still, I have two weeks to go. It's a five-week break between all of our visits uh, because of the election going on. But these are one of our best sets of pictures yet. And it even looks like there's sunshine on us. And there's not. But one day, one day we'll be on a real beach with real sunshine. But for now, Yazoo City me Medium Security Federal Prison visiting room background beaches will have to do. Uh, so these are the latest photos of us and I will scan those and put them up on Facebook as usual and you can check those out at uh, facebook.com slash Jody Emery that's where they'll be and uh, we've also got I, or rather I've also got uh, some more things to show you that were published. The other day I read in the newspaper about how the RCMP across Canada are kind of annoyed that they aren't able to catch all the stoned drivers and Mad Canada, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, are now pushing for random roadside drug testing of people. And I wrote a letter to the Vancouver Sun and the province newspapers saying why um, that's wrong and why when it comes to driving impairment it's proven by performance. So the province actually ran the letter in a much more edited version, impairment is complex, and that was pretty good there. But the Vancouver Sun ran the full letter pretty much, and uh, I'd love to read it aloud to you guys, and I will quickly. Driving impairment can be caused by many things, including lack of sleep, using a cell phone, consuming cold medicine or legal pharmaceuticals, applying makeup while behind the wheel, and many other scenarios. Impairment is proven by performance, not based on determining what substance a driver has consumed. If a vehicle is driven dangerously, be it recklessly swerving on the road or slowly drifting out of a designated lane, that danger to the public is demonstrated by the actions. Random roadside drug screening, as suggested by Mad Canada, violates personal privacy and individual liberty. Testing drivers for marijuana use isn't about testing for impairment, it's about identifying and punishing marijuana consumers. Impairment is caused by many different things, but roadside drug screening is simply targeting people who use pot. In the hunt for impairment on the road, remember that dangerous driving is always proven by driver performance, regardless of whether a joint was smoked or not. Jody Emery, BC Green Party candidate, Vancouver West End. So that was my letter in there, and I hope that message, in fact, helps you guys out there whenever you're asked about marijuana and driving. And in fact, there are studies that prove uh, that marijuana consumption actually makes for safer driving. And I'm not making that up. It's out there on Google. Search, uh, search it up or go to cannabisculture.com and search for driving and impairment. 
And uh, so my green campaign is going underway pretty well. We just came back, thanks to Greg and others, uh, Marius here too, and Ray from the lounge, for joining me out on the street at Robson and Cardero, where we held up my brand new Jody Emery Green Party signs, as well as some other large signs and Green Party signs. And we gave people the Jody Emery buttons, the Jody for MLA buttons. So I'm getting more handouts made, and we're going to be out pretty much every day of the week. If you check out my website, Jody for MLA, member of the Legislative Assembly, Jody for MLA.ca or just JodyEmery.ca will take you there. You'll find my website with some photos and videos, and I'm going to be adding a lot more updates. I have so much to share, so little time to do it, but uh, you can stay tuned to how my campaign is going on there and on my Twitter account, which I update regularly, and on Facebook, which I try to update as much as possible. Now, big event this weekend worldwide, the Global Marijuana March. Every single year, millions of people worldwide gather together and march in their cities alongside their fellow cannabis consumers and their fellow fighters for freedom, calling for justice and calling for peace, calling for compassion and tolerance and saying stop hurting harmless people who aren't hurting others. And that's what this fight is for. It's for freedom of peaceful people. And we have people marching all over the world. And I'll be here in Vancouver the first year I haven't been in Toronto and I'm sorry Toronto but I'll see you guys next year maybe but this year I can't make it my dad's birthday is on the weekend and I'm gonna do the Vancouver March and the election is coming up so I'm gonna help out with the Vancouver Global Marijuana March if you're in Vancouver or the Lower Mainland come on down this Saturday at noon at the art gallery we start to rally and at 2 p.m. the March goes down to English Bay, which is right down to my riding. So I'll be there in the parade with my signs and with other messages of peace for and no prison for pot and all sorts of other messages we bring to you with the Global Marijuana March. So go online, Google search Global Marijuana March. You'll find the web pages that list all the different cities. And if you don't have one near you, Get some friends, get some markers, get some cardboard, and get out on the street. Because you may not be able to be part of the biggest marches in the world, but those marches all started small. So maybe you can make a difference and do that too. So get inspired and get out there this weekend and know that you're marching alongside millions of others. Even some small groups, some large groups, we're all in it together. And it's a worldwide call for justice and liberty and freedom. Now I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick. I've got a film crew here to do some video work for Vancouver Television. I've got Canadian Press calling me later today. I've got business to take care of. I've got election stuff to take care of and myself to take care of and Mark too. So I've got to get going, but I appreciate you all tuning in as always. And I'll do a draw next week. As you know, I normally do it here. I'll just show the goodies. I'm not going to do it this week. No time. And also it'd be good to get some more entries. I didn't share the show last week, but free mark pin. Freemark stickers and the Freemark t-shirt and you can get all of these and more like the bubble bag I usually draw from at Cannabis Culture Headquarters store and even this shirt I'm wearing right now is made out of hemp and organic cotton and you can get it on sale right now at Cannabis Culture Headquarters store downstairs to your right or CannabisCulture.com slash store and remember that when you support our activist owned business you're supporting the cannabis culture and the fight for freedom and hopefully other cannabis related businesses out there can commit to do the same and put their money where their mouth is and help end prohibition. Thanks a lot for tuning in everybody. I'll see you next week. Check out CannabisCulture.com, Pot.TV, our live shows, our articles, our photos, our videos. We've got it all and it's all online and we really appreciate your support. Send Mark a letter. Get the details at freemark.ca. Thanks a lot and if you're in BC, vote green on May 14. Send a message to the government that you want a prosperous, peaceful future. Thanks a lot. Take care, everyone, and free Mark Emery.